So I want you to turn with me, and you can read along with me, and then we're going to go to our scripture up there. This is John 19. If you would like to take your Bible, go to John 19. Let me tell you what's going on. Jesus is on the cross. He's about ready to die. Now, how many, how many here know in the Old Testament, the Bible says, to honor your father and your mother, which is with promise. Yeah, very good thing. So that's what Jesus did many times. He would always honor his mother. So here's an honoring of his mother. Look what he said to John about his mom. He says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, this is verse 25, his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw, notice it was all women there, and it's great, Je therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Where's Jesus? He's on the cross. By the way, just because Mary gave birth to Jesus doesn't mean she doesn't need Jesus as her Savior. Hello? There's no immaculate Mother Mary. She's a sinner just like we were when we got saved. Of course, she got saved right away. The angel talked to her. She confessed Jesus. But she's sitting there, and God wanted her to say, Behold your son. Look, look at Jesus. Look at how he's hanging there. He's doing that for you. Now, see, you can get, if you brought, just think about this, Sherry, if you brought forth the Savior of the world, wouldn't that go to your head a little bit? Hello? Are you with me? Sure it would. It would go to your head just a little bit because you brought, without you, the Messiah couldn't come. But what Jesus wanted his mother to see is that what he would go through for our freedom and for our salvation, not religion, but for our walk with God himself. Say amen. All right. So he goes on further and he says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother's disciples whom he was standing by her, the woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, this is John. He said to John, behold your mother. Interesting, huh? And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Wouldn't you say that Mary became the mother of many? Yes, yes she did. She brought forth a Messiah, which brought forth many. Can you say amen? And you know what? The Bible says she'll be honored all her life, but never deified. Say amen. All right, you ready to get in the word? Let's go to our scripture back there. Do we have it? study a new creation realities and we're looking and calling this one God's favor on mothers or moms if you want to call a mom I don't know about you I like to call children children not kids because they're not necessarily kids but you know what I mean I'm just kind of joking with you but I want to call my mom mother okay because I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> anyway, so greetings to you, family of God. Today, we're going to honor our mothers, bless them, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers. Amen. And those that are in heaven, my mom's in heaven, so I want to honor her. And again, isn't it precious how God has blessed you with motherhood? And so we bless you too. Those nine months of pain, and if you have more than one child, oh, 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 God bless you moms. Amen. We're going to read some interesting scriptures, but let's see what God says about you. Amen. So open your Bibles to John 16, 21 through 22. And let's read our scripture. This is out of Proverbs 6, 20 through 23. My son, keep your father's command. 
and do not forsake the law or principles of your mother. Bind them continually about your heart. In other words, keep them precious. Tie them about your neck. Let them shine. I, I am a mother's child. And when you roam, they will lead you. That means when you walk about in the earth, God will guide you and lead you. These words will. And when you sleep, they will keep you. How about your sleep lately? How about reading a little scripture and then going to sleep? And when you awake, they will what? speak with you. I like getting up in the morning and hearing God say, good morning, son. Maybe you haven't heard that. I hope maybe you do. But you know, he does do that. He says, good morning. Here's the key. The enemy's been working hard to keep people from becoming God's friend. Because see, we think God's at it. He's got an attitude. He could destroy us any minute. See, you don't know God. Let's say introduce God to you the way he really is. The Bible says once you tasted that the Lord is good, you'll want more and more. How many here believe that? Raise your hands if you believe that. Is that the truth? Yes, it is. So in that very truth itself, God draws us close to him. Now, the problem, we live in a very broken, a very scattered world it's hard even to trust our parents don't look at me in that tone of voice I had good parents and I must confess I had decent mom and a decent father they loved me they supported me they did all that but not everybody has that in fact most people nowadays the enemy saw fit to destroy families and to destroy or try to destroy motherhood there should be two more sheets up here for me so amen I'm kind of flying naked. <laughs> All right. So, you with me? Look at what it says, John 16, 21 and 22. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that of a human being has been born into the world. This is Jesus talking. So he's saying, you're a gift giver. You're a wonderful person. And because, so you don't know, but because of Adam and Eve's sin, women have pain in childbearing. Okay, now listen to me carefully. That isn't God's doing. That's Adam and Eve's doing. So you have pain in childbearing. Now, I do know a couple of ladies who had no pain in childbearing. All you other ladies say, yeah, bet me. <laughs> Becky, no pain in childbearing, right? Not an ounce of pain. She thought maybe she, she had indigestion. Now, she's our Becky, all right? So when, when all of a sudden she went and, and explained a couple of things to her mom, mom says, let's go in and get you tested. It, immediately, baby came the next day. Now, that's really unusual. Can't you say? That's why God has special grace on some people. Well, let's not go through that again. Amen. Come on, ladies, say amen. All right, so... And it says that anguish goes away. Verse 22. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again. Right now you have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will be able to take from you. So I have a joy in me. It doesn't matter what happens. There's a joy in me. It's not happiness. How many know that your moods change? Hello? But... God in you doesn't. And if you manufacture and you, uh, how do you say it? If you concentrate on the Lord being in you, that joy will grow, all of that will grow, and the outside things won't be able to affect it. Everyone say outside things? No matter what people say to you, and Sherry, by the way, God has that problem handled. He's working on it, and he's heard your cry. Okay? So, oh, Amen has to do with your kids. All right, so let's go on. All right, I, sometimes I get in the spirit and I just got to come back. All right, we're going to cover these four ladies' areas. Everyone say, mothers are blessed. Okay, we're going to cover four areas quickly with your moms. Blessing, 
God's blessing on mothers. Two, the danger of being disrespectful. Three, the virtuous woman. And four, mother of many. Okay, so again, we're going to cover how God blessed mothers. Two, the danger of disrespect. Three, virtuous women. What are they? A little description of them. And four, mother of many. Did you get it? Go with me, being a blessing to mom. John chapter 2. How many here remember the wedding at Canaan? Do you remember the wedding at Canaan? Where Jesus turned the water into what? John chapter 2, okay? Now, the Bible says in the Old Testament, honor your father and your mother. Now, I realize not every father and mother are honorable. But remember, I talked to you about two different kinds of respect. One, God gives respect to us as human. He's not disrespectful to us. You notice that? That's why you have to ask him in. He doesn't jump in you, <laughs> knock you down. He's not doing any of that. You have to ask him in. He's a gentleman. Are you with me? So there's two respects. There's one God gives you. Every woman, every man needs to be respected. Say amen. And then there's a respect that's earned. You see, I deserve to be respected. The worst thing you can do with me is disrespect me because that shows me you can't learn to listen. And, you know, that's just built in us. It's not what I really think. I think we all need help. Okay? <laughs> can you say amen? But then there's a the respect that we build in others by keeping our word and doing what is right. You know, on the job, you can build respect on the job by doing your job and being faithful, being on time, all these kinds of things. Build respect. So there's two kinds. I respect you because you're a God child. Can you say amen? You don't earn that respect. It's given. And the, the respect that we earn is our behavior respect. Amen. I cannot teach you if you disrespect me. Do you understand? And same with children. If they disrespect your mom or something's going on there, it's hard to learn. And God set up the family to work. But often it doesn't. And so we need to go to God and have him fix it. Say amen. All right, so in John chapter 2, look at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Now, who, who's talking? Mary. And she's talking to who? Jesus. And what is she saying? They have no wine. For those that don't know, wine is anything from vinegar to booze. Now, everyone say firkin. Firkin, F-I-R-K-I-N, is an old term for an amount. It's like a pound, an ounce. It's a firkin. Everyone say firkin. Yeah. Now you've had your Greek lesson for you, all right? It means nine gallons. So if you have a pot that is a firkin, how many gallons? Nine. Now, they had six pots of firkins. Now, you think Jesus turned out into booze? Are you crazy? Come on, you just want a drink and you're justifying it. Just be honest before God. I want to take a shot. <laughs> and God will say, go right ahead. It's not what goes in a man that defiles the man. It's what comes out of your lousy mouth that defiles us. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm not talking to you. You're, you're immune. Can you say amen? <laughs> I love you, moms. So God did not make booze. Where did booze come from, Seth? Now, listen, if you want to have a beer or you want to drink a glass, I don't care. It's between you and God, right? So my job is not to come against what you do or don't do. My job is to educate you and help you understand. So when did the first booze come? 
when Adam and Eve what? Sin, because nothing rotted until they rotted. There was no mildew. There was no, what is it, all of the nasty stuff, mold, all that junk. It was none of that until after Adam fell and then the earth was cursed, the plants, the animals, all were affected. And an educational group, can I, can I take a segue for a second? Everything when under God's care was all part of God. Say amen. God was everything. But a group of God's creations decided to rebel and start their own stuff. I'm making it simple. His name is Satan. He's the devil. He's totally against God and God's people. He's the one that's running around the world causing all the wars, all the pain. He's the one that gave people disease and sickness. So if you like that kind of dude, then go ahead and keep rejecting God or accept God and let him make your life rich and beautiful. And I'm not talking money-wise. I mean talking about full and healthy. Can you say amen? So wine was not booze. Not only that, but the firkins that they had carried three firkins each. So that wasn't nine, that wasn't nine gallons. By the time it was whole done, I'm going to just tell you, I'm ahead of my notes, 167 gallons of wine. So you know it wasn't booze. Hello. Besides, you ever live in the desert and try to make alcohol? It turns to vinegar almost overnight. So hot. You have to have a cool place. I know I used to be an old winemaker with my mom. Anyway, and some moonshine. Let's go on. Why do you do that, Carrie? Because I'm trying to befriend you and give you an understanding that Christians are cool. You're cool. In fact, you're the coolest because your sins are forgiven. God is not against you. He's your father. So if you want to be cool, find Jesus. Become his friend. Amen. So he goes on and he says in verse 5, And his mother said to the servants, Whatever he tells you, do it. And now there was set there six water parts of of stone according to the manner of the publication of the of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons each whoa so the idea is we have you talk to somebody oh Jesus drank wine he was friend of the publican and the sinners and they would justify all that but just think of the wedding of Canaan now let me ask you I'm just going to make a long story short why did Jesus turn the water to wine? Hello, speak up. Because his mother asked him to. And the Bible says, honor your father and... Remember that. Next time your mother asks you to do something, don't complain to her. It's not a good thing. Anyway, let's go on. So I just go ahead past that. Did you get that? There was 167 gallons of grape juice. It was grape juice. And if it was barely wine, it was just probably one or a half percent. Kind of like old duels. What's, what's the Miller's one? I forget. They have that fake beer that has just a hit or something in it. You guys don't know? None of you used to drink. Oh, you're acting so pure. <laughs> That's, I know, and I'm so glad, Seth, you are an exception. And, you know, that's why, you know, that's why God has big plans for you. You have never allowed yourself to corrupt. Have you ever did something and then wish you didn't? Seth's above that. <laughs> no, you're not. You just don't drink. Bless your heart. Now... Everybody say amen. amen. Now remember, Jesus is perfect, isn't he? Yes. So don't, please don't say Jesus is making people drunk. Jesus is causing acts. Don't do, don't even dare to say that. It's terribly dangerous. 
My dad said to me, there's two things I want you to do and promise me, son, when I'm dead. I said, dad, what is it? He says, number one, never make fun of God nor his people. See, I wasn't saved yet. And two, don't get a tattoo. Well, <laughs> laugh at me, come on. I says, Dad, you ought to look at everything now. Everybody's a billboard. Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> now, you're not mad at me, are you? I don't, I don't think tattoos are bad. But my dad asked me that. And you know what I kept? I kept his word. I honored him. All right, are you still with me? Second point, the dangers of disrespect. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 6, look at 1 through 3. Disrespect is rebellion. And in Deuteronomy 19, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is doing something against God's wish or will. How do, how do human beings practice witchcraft? They use words and bring curses. You mean somebody can curse something? Yes, they can. They do it all the time. When's the last time somebody cut you off on the word? Did you bless them or curse them? <laughs> Don't look at me in that tone of voice. You were not created to curse. And I'm not talking about cussing. I'm talking about cursing people, putting things down, complaining. You're not made to be that way. Because as we sow... So if you like negative and bad things and everything breaking down and you're always under a problem and having a situation, just keep your mouth flapping. We got to get a hold of this and see it. I'm just a right straight up preacher. I don't milk things out so you don't understand. No, this has got to be controlled. Have somebody ever said something that hurt you really bad? Never mind that sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hear, hurt me. That's a bunch of bull. I know people that still today are so wounded because of words spoken by somebody they love. We need to get you into a place that doesn't happen to you. Say amen. So being disrespectful. Children, listen to this. This is a quote from the Old Testament. Obey your parents in the Lord. Now, if your parent is acting like a boob, that's a different story. But it, while they're in the Lord and serving God, obey them, even if you don't like them. Say amen. amen. Boy, you guys, I hope you get this, because there's a curse Satan waits for you to do. As soon as you start being, now listen, as soon as we start being disrespectful and we put down authorities, we complain about all that, a door opens and Satan can come in and start harassing you. You don't believe me? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 7 tells you about what not to do as a Christian. Complain, bicker, fight. Hello? We need to be reading the Bible so we will stop doing the things that are our worst enemies. Say amen. All right. So look, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. What's the promise, Pastor Kerry? Listen. That you may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Hello? You want to know why children die early? Because they're mouthy and disrespectful. Hello? It says it right there. Not all the time. But God's going to protect your children if they respect their mom and their dad. Hello? You see how Satan worked on breaking down everything and putting disrespect and everything? So the whole thing fights against itself. Remember something. Arguing is not of God. You got something you want to say? Say it. But when somebody starts arguing with you, drop the subject and walk off. Say, I got it. Because to argue, whether you're right or wrong, you both lost and Satan gains. He who throws mud loses ground. Are you with me? Proverbs, look at this, verse 30, 11 through 13. There is a generation that curses its father and does not bless his mother. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes, full of pride. Last days, men will be lovers of themselves, covetous, proud, disrespectful to parents. Yet 
not washed in of its filthiness. Let me read it again. It's a generation that is pure in his own eyes and it's not washed from their filthiness. Verse 13, there is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Did you know Jesus talks about a little problem? He says that the Jewish people had so worked the law, which you're not supposed to touch, that said that because I'm a child of yours, you are a blessed parent. That would, let me put it in English. Because I was born from you and because I'm blessed of God, you parents, you got in on the deal. Now, is that respectful? Huh? No. No, they wouldn't have got born if they didn't respect God. Hello? You got the thing that the dog doesn't get wagged by the tail. Hello? A few don't wag the majority. Say amen. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let some mealy-mouthed person wag me around. What Jesus was saying is, don't think you're something because you're this. Don't think your parents are blessed because they gave birth to you. That's what Jesus is saying. People actually think because they are they, everyone else is second. Hello, are you here with me? People treat you that way, always talking down. I know, I'm. hold on so I don't talk down. Are you with <laughs> me? The idea is the enemy has to get us to begin to go against the grain, to work against ourselves so he can come in and do his nasty stuff. Hello? You need to be wise as a certain, gentle as a dove, but you need God's help helping you. Don't you think God is way ahead of the devil? You bet. So how come we're not listening to him more? Do you think that God is more smarter than the devil? How come we're not listening to him more? Because the enemy's got you deceived thinking that God is religion and God's people are mean because you probably have some bad examples. But listen, if I got bit by a dog, do I hate all dogs? No. If somebody calls me a name, do I hate all people? No. Why do we put people in boxes and generalities? Listen. God's people are, are wonderful, but don't put your eye on them. Put your eye on God. They're just children like everyone else. Have everybody in your family together? All, all your family? Is anybody need some help? We're all right. Well, what makes you think that God's family are all totally together? We're here to get help. And that just took care of somebody's belief system. We'll see you at church next week. And by the way, next week we're going to teach you how to beat the tar out of the enemy at every turn. Make sure you invite a friend and get here. Okay? I'll show you how to win your fights with God. How many here would have, like to have a less stress, less mess family life? How, some wisdom from above maybe? Yeah, all right. So guess what? Don't you miss next Sunday. It's a little commercial for you. All right, so look at Proverbs 29, 15. This one broke my heart when I read it. It's been years since I read this. Did you know nowadays, because there's a lot of things, a lot of stuff going on, not every mother can be motherly. Not every mother should be attended to their children. Things happen, folks. Hello. But one of the worst dangers is to be to leave a child alone by himself or by herself. Hello. Can you tell me why, Pastor Gary? Because there is a live devil that visits kids. You, oh, come on. Moi. At five years old, I remember something coming on me, and I started doing evil things as a kid. That's the day I separated from God. You see, when a child is born, they're automatically saved. But when they grow up to know the difference between right and wrong, they die spiritually and have to become born again. Now, I remember those spirits coming to me. One time a spirit come to me, and, and boom, came to the neighbors about me. Now, think about it. What is my position in God? God made me a what? A pastor. 
I didn't make myself a pastor. I didn't one day wake up and decide I wanted to be, I wanted to be an evangelist. But God made me a pastor. That means that it was a calling on my life when I was born. That means I had light on me when I was born. And Satan says, oh, I better shut down that person. So he starts working things to corrupt your life, my life, and try to shut me down. So I can tell you incidents that just came out of hell for a child, me, causing me, corrupting me, because I, God doesn't, excuse me, Satan doesn't want me to fulfill my call, and he doesn't want you to fulfill it either. So stop listening to all the distractions and start focusing on God. Someone say amen. Thank you for the good preaching. Okay, listen, verse 15. It just says, the rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Moms, if you're young, don't leave your children by themselves. Hello. Don't do it. We had a granddaughter. We loved her dearly, Christian family and everything. We sent her off to public school. Nothing wrong with public school because there's a lot of Christians in it. But the devil sent her cultish girls that gave her books on witchcraft and everything. She's just a little kid. And she was cutting herself and all of this started happening. You interview your children. You sit down and say, are you hearing any voices? Do you have a special little friend? Make sure that the spook man doesn't show up. Oh, Pastor Kerry, you're just overdoing it, am I? Go back in your past. Those little voices and little things. Come on, I'm talking to you. So we should be aware, mothers, of our responsibility. Say amen. A couple of things. The first scripture from the New Testament was a promise. What would happen is you would live well. You would live long if you respect others. Say amen. Now, you might not like her, but I like her testimony. You have to get past all the flack. Amen. Oprah Winfrey, she'll tell you that she has Jesus in her heart. Now, you're going to see all this other stuff. Never mind. She says two things that I found out from God that I needed to do. Number one, respect everyone. And number two, be appreciative and thankful. She's the richest woman, black lady in the world. And she rose up in a poverty zone. So what, what do you want? You want to sit around, go through life, be a survivor? Or do you want to learn the things of God and learn how to rise up and lead others? Say amen, moms. So there's a danger in disrespect. And disrespect will shorten your life. Open the door. You'll be outside of your umbrella. And Satan will be able to come in because your protection is God. And when you're not in God, not acting like God, then you're out in the open. Easy game. So don't be out in the open. Be under protection and have a good time and a good life. Hello? I think when, when I come to Christian, this is what the, I was told. You know, if I come to Jesus, I'll have to give up everything. I won't have any fun. Now, listen to that. First of all, Jesus doesn't take anything from you but your sin. You don't have to give up anything to follow Jesus. Just ask him in your heart. You have to ask him into your heart and forgive you. Okay? He's not going to take anything from you. Those things will leave you. I, I'm, I'm an ex-entertainer. Do you have many friends I've had all my life? Hundreds. And then when I'd buy a pound of weed, I'd have 200. I mean, I was a leader. But all for the wrong stuff. All for the wrong stuff. Then when I got saved, you'll laugh. Instead of all my friends saying, oh, we're so glad you got saved. You're a better person, Carrie. They all split. <laughs> my, we were going on tour with Wailing Jennings and Willie Nelson as a backup band. We were already in the studio, already booked. And I get saved. Do you think my band liked that? Because I held the band together. They were a bunch of hippies. 
I wanted to go somewhere. I get saved and my lead guitar player says to me, I'm going to kill you. You destroyed the band. I said, I did not. I could still play in the band and be a Jesus freak. I didn't know any better. But you see, people will turn on you sometimes. Don't look at them. Paul says, don't look and be afraid of their faces. If you really love God and really are now a good, godly person, they'll come back to you and they'll say, you know, I was harsh on you before, but you've got something I want. Say amen, moms. All right, you ready for the next one? A virtuous woman. Go with me, Proverbs 31. We're looking at certain verses. We're going to look at verse 10, verse 20, and 25 through 31. And it'll be up on the board, too, so you'll be able to walk, write it down. Wow. Guess what, ladies? You're going to have dinner or lunch cooked for you by the men. It's our way of telling you we love you. Amen. So you ready? Let's, uh, let's look at this. 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. The verse 20 says, she extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in the time of, to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. I got the hiccups now. And, and her tongue is the law of kindness. And her watch, and she watches over the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness, sitting around all day. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Wouldn't that wonderful thing? You want your children to call you blessed? I love you, mom. Oh, sure you do. What do you want? Oh, let's go on. Yeah, I know you do, Michael. You're a good example of that. Are you with me? So it goes on further. It says, her children will call her blessed. And then finally, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own the works. Excuse me, I said that all along. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, usually it's the men that get honored, but a virtuous woman is honored. I can actually call my wife the better half. I don't have a problem with that. Now, she might call me the better half if I could squeeze it out of her. <laughs> but I sure love her. She is quite the blessing. Great grandma, too. All right. Are you a virtuous woman? What do you do if you don't fit that description? I don't know of anybody that does. So you go to God and say, God, make me a virtuous woman. And he says, okay, daughter, no problem. Has God ever said to you, no? I'm going to ask you an honest question. Have you ever heard God say no? Hard to tell, huh? I have heard him say no. If it, going out and destroy your life, he's going to say no. But most of the time, all of his promises are in him, what? Yes, and in him, amen. So God's on your side. He wants the best for you, but he doesn't want you, so, you killing yourself to get it. Say, I won't kill myself to get it. I'll just wipe out everybody else on the way. <laughs> hey, folks, where are you going, by the way? Do you know where you're headed? How about five years from now? you know where you're going to be? Interesting question. Why would you do that, Pastor Kerry? Because God's the one that has your future. And if you trust God, you know five years from now is going to be better than right now. Oh, you never know that. See, you don't know God. Get to know him. Once you get to know and get close to God, he shows you things to come. How about saying, Seth, you want to see yourself in five years? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Hello. 
but we're going after God, and God makes us into something special. Can you say amen? And finishing, mother of many. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38 is about Mary. Now, folks, most people don't know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was only 13 years old. They were a lot mature back then than sometimes they are. Now, please, I'm not picking on anyone. She's married to Joseph almost twice her age. Quite a responsibility to be chosen by God to bring forth Messiah, huh? Now, why did he choose her at that age? Because she was still a virgin. Nobody had been with her. There wasn't any defilement of any sort. Hello? But yet she ends up being pregnant. And we know the Holy Spirit came down upon her. She said to God, be it done unto me according to your word. And the word came into her flesh and into her womb. And the word was born. His name is Jesus. No blood from the Father, so there's no corruption. The reason why you age, the reason why you get sick is because there's a curse passed on you. You have a disease called sin. And the way to eradicate that daily is by meeting with God, saying, God, cleanse me and wash me by sin today. Okay? And then when tomorrow gets here, you do the same thing. Keep cleansed. Otherwise, it's kind of like worse, though. What would happen if you haven't taken a shower in a day, in two days, three days? And Seth says, I'm on a fishing trip with my dad. <laughs> Amen. You'll stink. And that's where every human being is. Without the cleansing of Jesus, without us asking God to forgive us, we, even though in our best mood, stink. You can look right in the mirror and you won't even like yourself. And you put on makeup and you're doing all this and you look in the air and go, <laughs> you're getting older, there's more wrinkles. You see, if we focus on us, we're in trouble. We focus on others like us, we're in trouble. We focus on Jesus, he will make us champions. Can you say amen? So Mary became the mother of many. So let's see what she says in verse 28 or 26. Now in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city named Galilee, named Nazareth. Now, folks, Nazareth was a dump. Please don't get mad at me. It wasn't a beautiful city. There was only a couple of hotel rooms and some places to eat, and it was also mostly farmland. So where did Jesus, Joseph, and everything end up? They end up in a what? In a stable, an outcropping of a rock where a stable built around it. I've been there. I've been to Israel, so I know. But anyway, the whole idea behind it is, is here's the king of the world, the king of all kings, the creator of all things, in the ba body of a baby in a manger and being wrapped with swaddling cloth. Do you know what that is? That's the rags you wipe down your engine and after your menstrual session, before it's used, of course. So in other words, the worst of the worst of the worst, the world treated Jesus that way, and yet a young lady brought forth the Savior of the world, and she becomes the mother of many. Aren't you glad she was obedient to God? Aren't you glad God got Joseph out of the way before he caused a problem? What was Joseph about to do before the angel of the Lord showed up? He's about to ready to divorce his wife, put her away, because she was found pregnant with God's child. That's a noble thing, right? I don't know whose kid this is. So see, he was kind of a semi-unbeliever. But once he saw Jesus and everything, all switched. Now, ladies, God has blessed you. 
God will bless you more and more as you go to him and talk with him and befriend him. He's not your enemy. You do have an enemy, and he doesn't announce himself. He just comes on in and starts taking advantage of you. The Bible calls him a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So anything that's taken from you, stealing from you, all that kind of, you know who he is. Can you say amen? Not only that, but there is a real bad omen on those that are disrespectful. Got the hiccups again. You see, once I lost my leg, once I had all these operations on me, I get hiccups as a blessing. <laughs> the third thing is, what? Do you remember what the third point was? Look at your notes. Okay. We got blessed. We got watch out for respect. We've got, what does God do with a woman? I got to look at my notes too. I just want to also see that you're taking notes. Third, virtuous woman, and of course, the mother and Mary, our mother and many. Now, is there any questions you have as a mother that this father can give you? <laughs> How is that word, Sherry? That word good, right on? Okay. Be encouraged. Don't get your eyes on them. Just pray for them. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sherry's got a couple of children that have a calling on their life. They just don't know it yet. Remember, like me, when I was young, there was a calling on my life. But it was until later I entered into that calling. So don't quit praying for your children and loving them and caring for them, asking God to bless them and keep them and hold them. All right. So, guys, let's bless our moms. Father, we come right now. We place your mothers, these wonderful women, Lord God, on your throne, in your altar. Thank you for taking care of them. We have a wonderful new sister today, and we just thank you for them. Help them to understand you, Father, and to enjoy the fact that they're mothers. And let their, their family bless them back. In Jesus' name, and we all said...